Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to the Provokers Podcast, where we talk about things that you probably should too. I'm here joined by John and Noah once again. You guys want to introduce yourself to people that are new around here? Hey guys, this is Noah. Bald fuck is coming up. And this is John. The bald one, apparently. Um, yep. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of small talk, I know. Uh, but I, I've been, I've noticed that I've been the one that usually like brings up certain topics, uh, like some real world topic and stuff. But I just, I found a couple like uh, things that I wanted to mention here today. Some mm-hmm. are good, some aren't good. Um, but the uh, Legend, so for any Nintendo fans out there, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is going to cost 70 instead of the normal 60, which is a bit strange because that means Nintendo is the first people that are pushing for $70 of a normal game, right? And so that's going to be a little scary if uh, Microsoft and Sony decide to join them essentially, be like, oh, well, 70 sounds great. Um, I don't know why Nintendo's deciding to do this. Um, I don't personally like Zelda that much. I think, I mean, it's, it's fine. If you do, but I would not be paying seventy dollars for that. I would wait for to get a coupon or something before right. I even think about buying that. Um, yeah. Also, another gaming news: uh, Hogwarts Legacy, which a game is, which is a game we talked about last episode. If you guys want to go watch that one, um, but it surpassed five hundred thousand players worldwide before it even came out, which was which is crazy. Like that's that's one of the biggest things in the gaming world in just this past year. Um, which is pretty crazy. I don't think any game had 500,000 before it even came out. Uh, the only game that got close was 450,000, which was Cyberpunk 77, uh, which of course tanked. <laughs> so yeah. who knows? But I, I haven't played that game. I know John has played it at least once. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it's it, like I said, it seems like a decent game. I might give it a try. I'm just not a big Harry Potter fan or anything, uh, mm-hmm. but we'll see how that goes. Um but yeah, it's, it's 500,000. That is impressive. So clearly, and when I went on Twitch, uh, I think it was two days ago, everyone was playing it. Like I could, like everyone on the entire home page was playing it. So, uh, which is pretty impressive. Um, also, for people that know about the backrooms, the backrooms is actually getting its own movie. Uh, it's been confirmed at this point. I mean, I, it was only a matter of time. It's found footage stuff, so of course that people are going to make that into a movie. I just hope, similar to what my hopes for the Mar movie is, that it's not garbage um because the backrooms is a thing that i really enjoy and i think it it has the major potential to be horrifically terrifying uh if they um you know if they don't screw it up i don't know what the company making it is i read it the other day but i don't remember anymore uh who's making it you'd have, you'd have to look up for yourself but yeah it's, it's getting its own movie which i uh think is cool if they don't screw it up which they could if they get um, the right people it won't get screwed up yeah, well, if it's a, if they could t- they could take it in two different directions. They could take it as a wanderer, which is the person that's just there, or they can do it as a found footage thing, uh, where it's like someone new came into the back rooms and they're having a camera. So it's first person. So you really would just have a uh, voiceover. You wouldn't need someone to actually be on screen besides someone if someone's playing a monster. Um, yeah. yeah, the back rooms is a really cool concept. I'm glad that it's uh, blown up as much as it has. And uh, yeah, just my hope is that the movie doesn't flop. Is what I would appreciate. Because I'm not a big fan of horror movies because usually they're cliche and stupid. Um, but I think the backrooms has the potential to be good. It just needs to, like Noah said, they just need to find the right people for it and they just need to have the right production company doing it, hopefully. Um, yeah. I don't know who's doing it, like I said. But if they find some good people, then I think it can be great. Yeah. And then uh, my last one is pretty... My last one is... Uh, I said some of these are bad, but I guess none of them are. Um, Disney lost $5.5 billion, billion with a B. Uh, in cost, and Damn. I can only wonder why that's happening. Um, man, I wish I could think of any reason that they could be losing 5.5 billion. I honestly hope that uh, number quadruples in the next couple of years, um, because I want everyone in the world is is riding against Disney at this point. Not not Disney World or anything, just like the the things they're producing. Um, like everyone, like <laughs> everyone is like I, I don't think anyone was surprised to see these numbers. Mm. I sure wasn't. I was actually surprised it wasn't more. Right. Um, because they're they're pushing. I'm not going to get political, but they're pushing something that no one wants. Even the people that are part of the agenda don't want it. And so it's just like Disney. I hope you're paying attention to what you're doing because soon, I think if if, if Disney keeps doing this, I mentioned this last uh in a different podcast episode. I think Netflix could have a chance to re- get revived from the dead, especially if they're making more things like Stranger Things and Wednesday. I think absolutely they could come back. And if Disney, because Disney's their major competitor, if they start to suck like they are now. Oh boy, they Netflix I think has a chance. Same with Hulu and HBO and like all those other people. 
Uh, but Netflix is like the biggest competitor to Disney. So I think they could have a chance. Um, and I, I hope Netflix can, can have a chance because right now they're making better stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, who that being said, go ahead. I mean, yeah, I think Netflix has a chance because just recently I found like two or three different shows that I have absolutely loved. They can never find on Disney. So. Yeah, no, I, the only two shows I would even consider watching again is the Stranger Things season one to four and then Wednesday. Those are the only things I would watch again. I haven't seen anything else on Netflix that piqued my interest. But if they keep making shows like Stranger Things and Wednesday, which, by the way, are both kind of horror and melancholic um, and also like, uh, what's the word? Deadpan, I think is the word. If you yeah, clearly right. that's what people want to see. And so if you keep doing and supernatural forces, because that's both of those have supernatural forces in them. And if you keep making a compelling story with compelling characters, then boom, you got something. Because like Noah just said, I think they could have a chance. It's just they, yeah. they're relying on Disney sucking, which congratulations, Netflix. It's working. Um, yeah. So, yeah, which, I just think, I, you know, to me, these are happy news because I think Netflix, um, I didn't used to like, I wish your prices would go down. I got to say that. Um, I would say if your prices went down just a little bit, even for just the ads one, I don't care about ads really. But even if that went down a little bit, I think uh, I think they could thrive easily. Yeah. But, uh, plus, you know. Plus, with Netflix, not only do they actually have, like, Stranger Things on Wednesday, they have a third one no one really talks about, but everyone kind of knows about it. Got the Peaky Blinders. Very good show. Yeah, I've heard, of that. I've heard people like that one. I've never yeah. heard of that once, but, you know, I'm not really uh, movement in the when, or in the, I was gonna say in the Wednesday sphere, in the uh, in the Netflix sphere. So like, I because I just started Netflix a while ago. It wasn't like a thing that I've that I've been using for years. It's just uh, I used it for Stranger Things season four and then Wednesday because they both came out not soon with each other, but relatively soon. Um, yeah. so I watched season four and then like I think it was a month later Wednesday came out. So I'm like cool. Um, and so I watched those. But after that, you know, I didn't watch it again because. I uh, don't need to. I I perused the thing for a little bit, but I didn't really see anything else that I wanted. So I'm just like, all right, well, I guess I'm off of Netflix again. But I haven't touched Disney in uh, at least a year because not only are their prices going up, but also they're making garbage. So why would I want to go on there? Um, exactly. Same thing with Marvel. I think Marvel because Disney's tied to Marvel. I honestly hope Marvel, if they have enough money, which they're losing money as well, can break out of Disney because I think Disney is the thing that screwed them. Honestly. Um, yeah. I think uh, there's the only Disney Plus shows that were good, and you can't disagree with me on this one because it's facts, is WandaVision, uh, Loki. Loki was the best one they ever made. And then uh, Moon Knight was the, I would say, the like his was good. It wasn't great, but it was good. And then everything else is garbage, like everything else. And uh, the Thor Love and the Thunder movie apparently had bad CGI. I didn't even really watch I mean, I watched it, but it, I, I'm not a good CGI person, so I couldn't tell. Mm. Um, and then She-Hulk was, a, was the stupidest thing I've, I've ever seen in terms of media. And then um, I'm just hoping Quantum Media, which is Ant-Man's next movie, doesn't suck. Uh, it has Paul Rudd, so it already has a good reputation. Yeah. Um, but I just don't know if there's going to be, you know, Disney inserting themselves into it. Mm. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I'm just hoping, I think that's what screwed him, I think, is if Marvel can break free out of Disney, which is a hard thing to do, because they're probably contracted in. Um, mm -hmm. I think they could be doing better. Because I think, uh, what's his name, Kevin Feige, I think he has good ideas. He was already leading the, the Infinity Saga already, so clearly he has good ideas. I just think that Disney's kind of screwing him and uh, not allowing him to do what he wants to do. But, you know, that's how movie works, unfortunately. And especially when Disney owns, like, 90% of the world, you know, it's kind of hard to... You know, like I said earlier, like yeah, like we talked about J.K. Rowling or whatever Rowling. I don't, I don't care about her last name, um, but like we talked about, like it's hard not to support her because she's everywhere. And so it's same thing with Disney. It's hard not to support Disney because they're basically everywhere. Um, sure. But it seems like some people are finding out ways to do so because they lost five point five billion, uh, which is crazy. And that was just this year, by the way. We're only what halfway into February, not even, and they've yeah. lost five point five billion. So. That to me is good news because hopefully that's knocking on the door and saying, "Hey, uh, maybe don't do that, <laughs> and then get better." But you know, yeah. that's just how. Be. Yeah, I just wanted to share some of that stuff because I like to keep people up to date on different things because we got, we got to keep starting making things that are that differ from the tractable because otherwise people are just going to be like, "These guys are just copying them." 
I feel like people um, already believe that. Tough. It's possible. Yeah. But like if we keep making new things like uh Dreamer Scheme, that's a totally thing that I invented, right? The uh the headlines thing that I'm doing now, those are like different things that they don't do. So if we keep making those, then hey, they can't say anything. Yeah, um, true. yeah so uh just let me know how your guys' uh weeks have been, I guess. Tiring. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I uh started a new challenge run, which might be the hardest one I've attempted so far. It's in one of the Kingdom Hearts games, one of the less popular ones that everyone, in, even in the fandom of Kingdom Hearts, they're like, this is just a terrible game. I'm one of those people who are like, no, nah, I think it's fine, but the challenge run is difficult, and I, it, it, especially later in the game, it's going to get way worse. Yeah. That's not usually how it goes. At first, it's like a little easy, then as it goes on, it gets a little harder. Right. Well, what's the challenge? So it's hard to explain without, like, the person knowing the how the gameplay mechanics work in that game. But basically, you have your attack. The way you attack is through like cards that you use. It's mm-hmm. like sort of like a card game, but not really. Um, and mm-hmm. then you you use your cards. When you run out, you recharge your deck to reload all your cards. And normally, it's it's a little bit of a hassle for people to get a hold of. Um, but the challenge I'm doing is I'm only using one card in my deck. And Ooh. you're not meant to do that. Well, good luck. Hmm. Yeah, I... I so it's it's kind of like that dream I had, right? When I, when I went to space, I was attacking people with playing cards, you know? Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah. I think I should. Should I sue uh, whoever makes Kingdom Hearts then because they stole they stole my dream idea? I feel like you had the dream way after the game came out, but I, I can't know that yeah. for certain. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I can sue them into oblivion. I'll win. I'll, I'll win. Sure. Anybody will sue anyone for anything. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. That really reminds me. I, I should have put this on one of my headlines. But there, someone had has made a Karen anthem. Like an anthem for Karens. I'm not, not even really? joking. Look up look up Karen Anthem on YouTube and see what comes up. I think it should be the first video that comes up. But it is hilarious. Um, and it's like that. the song the song lyrics are like talking about Target and how they want to speak to the manager. It's 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 great. It's fabulous. Um Sounds good. <laughs> it's it's really great. But yeah, look, look look it up if you want some enjoyment later. But uh yeah. Ooh. But besides tiring, is that all you got in order? I mean with where I work, it's always tiring. It's always a bit stressful. Hell, it takes a toll on you, but that's it. I mean, huh. the only thing I've had that happen this week is that starting my week off as I had a bunch of pipes bursting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it went like Monday, I woke up to my mom screaming like bloody murder. Let me get the hell downstairs. I come down. I look in the basement. Man, we got a pop that burst, and there's water all over the goddamn floor. And I'm just like, eh, shit. Not how I want to start my week. I was late to work. <laughs> and then after that, I got to work. And it was all right. And Tuesday, I'm at work halfway through my shift. I get a text that says, is there supposed to be a fountain coming out of the house? And I'm just like, oh, fuck me. Another one? I come home. I look. It's under a bush. Because we have a bush in front of our house. So we have to chop down the bush, get to the pipe so that people could come fix it, turn off the water, and all that fun shit. So, yeah. Other than pipes bursting, it's fun. That sounds stressful. Start the week, you know? You walk downstairs, your basement starts flooding. <laughs> no, I've, uh... I, I, I told, uh, I know this in our Discord, but, like, I, I've had... That's happened to us as well, where we, um... It was actually funny, because it was actually not in the morning. It was at, it was in the middle of the night. So what my plan is, or my... I say plan, but it's my schedule, I guess. I don't usually go to sleep until, like, 1 or 2. And, um, my parents... Or my, my mom goes to sleep around... I want to say 11 or so. My sister goes to sleep at like 9. Like really, she's the earliest one. My brother goes to sleep around like 11 or 12. So I'm usually the only one awake around like the midnight mark. And I went downstairs to use the bathroom. And the bathroom, our bathroom is connected to the basement. 
And so when you go into the bathroom, or I went into the bathroom, I started hearing the sound coming from the basement. I'm like, huh, that's weird. And it sounded like air, like it sounded like rushing of air. And I'm like, that didn't sound right. And so I, I run upstairs with my mom, like, hey, there's something going on with the basement. And uh, we opened the basement. And just like Noah's story, the entire, it wasn't like flooded or anything, but it was like the entire, like there's a layer of water um, in on the floor. So it wasn't completely flooded, but it was getting there. And uh, luckily, my grandfather uh, is basically good at everything, apparently. Uh, he came to fix it. And it was there was something wrong, I think, with the internal pipes. Um, but he was able to fix it. And uh, But yeah, it was definitely scary at the time because I was like, man, that could have gotten worse over the course of the night if I didn't see it. Um, so, you know. But yeah, it's uh, especially winter, that kind of stuff happens because your pipes uh, can freeze up and it messes with them. So definitely yeah. don't want that. All right. But, with that being said, I think it's time to get into the topic for today. The topic for today is actually um, technically not a game show. It's more of a quiz show, I guess. Uh, but like I said earlier, we got to start making things different. Yeah. Um, so I've, yeah. I've, cre- I've created a quiz show called what, uh, what Do You Do? Now, it's not What Would You Do. That's an actual thing. This is a different thing. So what's going to happen is I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of a spooky story. And you're going to be in that story. You're going to be tell you okay. you got to take your position as the person in that story. And you're going to tell me or at the end of the at the end of the question it's going to say what do you do? And then you're going to give me a long and thoughtful answer. Don't just say, "Well, I'd stab him." No, give me a long and thoughtful answer and explain to me why you're going with that answer because it's it's completely open-ended. There's no multiple choice and it's completely open-ended. Just what would you do in that situation? So and uh uh, can't remember. John's on a losing streak, so I'll have him go first. Um, is this like based on morals? Uh, some of them, yes. Well, uh, they're I'm more. Th- there are. There's a lot. A, a lot of them are more scary than moral decisions. Like you're not choosing. Oh, uh, it's not. They're not trolley problems. They're more oh. like just scary situations that could happen. Um. So let's do this, John. You ready? All right. We're going to start with an uh, easy one. Well, I say easy, but we're going to start with a short one. You hear your bedroom door slam shut, and you know no one is home. What do you do? Um, probably would get out the window, because there's someone in the house, right? I don't have a very drafty house. It couldn't be explained by a draft. Someone's in the house. I got, I got a good escape plan through the window, and then I run over to the neighbor's house. If I don't have my phone, maybe if I have my phone, I just call 911. But then I run over to the neighbor's house to get away from whoever the intruder is and then wait for the cops. All good. Crisis averted. Wow. You, you know that, that this was your bedroom door, right? Like your bedroom door. Well, I, I, uh, I don't have a bedroom door. Well, pretend you have a bedroom door, damn it. All right. So, pretend, so you have a bedroom door, right? And it's slammed shut. So your bedroom door was open and it slammed shut, meaning they're on the other side. Right. right. And so so you're, that's why you're saying you would go out the window because that's your only means of escape. Yeah. Because if, right. I, if I try to get past them, they're just going to murder me. If they have a weapon, of course. If they don't have a weapon, then maybe I'd stand a chance. It depends. I don't want to take that risk if they do have a weapon. Out the window, I go. <laughs> out the window. All right. All right, no, it's uh same question. Do you want me to reread it? Did you oh. get it all? Oh no, no, no. I have been thinking this through ever since he asked John. All right. Perfect. For me, I would get up off my bed, grab my little league mat, jump the fuck out the window, go around to the front of the house, through the front door, bike up the stairs to where my door is, knock that motherfucker out, and call the cops. Simply because, well, if they would expect me to come from the door, if I jump the fuck out the window, that's going to confuse the fuck out of them. So then I could come around behind them and be like, surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Interesting. So, so you're doing what John's doing, except you're taking it a step further and you're going back in the house and attempting to get them. Yeah, it's my fucking house. I'm a defendant. That's interesting. Um, so the way I take the situation, by the way, I did, I only wrote a couple of these. This one I did not write. I actually just looked up like, uh, like, uh, unfortunately a lot of these are true, by the way. Um, so the, I just looked up true horror stories and this was one of them. 
Um, the way I handle the situation, I actually have had the situation happen, just not just minus the person because it was a draft. So I think I told this story before, but I'm just gonna just gonna summarize it. Essentially, I was in my room playing a game with my dog back when I had her, and all of a sudden I hear I hear my brother's door shut. Now my brother's door is not a normal door; it does not open like a normal door. So you you turn the knob, it doesn't do anything. It's a it's a push and pull door. Think of like a store or whatever, just with a it's like a heavy door, like an old style one, and all of a sudden it was open before and all of a sudden I just hear it slam shut like a full on slam. And my first instinct was to grab the nearest weapon. I grabbed a pair of scissors because that's all I had that was sharp at the moment. And I'm like, I was like dual wielding them because I think I had two of them. And my dog, my dog looked at the, it was looking at the door um, as if she was hearing someone. And I'm like, someone's in this house. Right. And I live on the second floor. So my first instinct was not to jump out the window, especially if I didn't know if someone was there. Um, by the way, speaking of which, no one was at the house during this point. Um, so I, I walked, I opened my door carefully with my dual wielded, um, scissors and no one was there. And so I went to my brother's door, which is literally right next to me. And I saw that it indeed was closed. And my thought was maybe the person was in there, like they were in there. And all I'm thinking was maybe I should just leave it closed. And so I leave it closed. I come back in my room. I have my scissors on hand ready just in case something happens. And I text my mom. I'm like, Hey, are you home yet? And she's like, no, we're still out. And so th- at that point in my mind, I'm like, okay, so that couldn't have been her. And uh, what I what had happened was the door had slammed again. And at this point, I was like, okay, someone has to be in this house. So I dual wheeled again. I literally bust down the door, not bust down the door, but I bust open the door to my brother's room. And it's completely dark in there. He didn't have a single light on. And I think I walked in briefly. My dog had followed me just so as protection. Um, and she wasn't barking at anything. She wasn't growling at anything. So I, I didn't figure someone was in there. And she wasn't sniffing the ground as if someone was there. So I turned on my brother's light. I looked around the house um, for anything. And then after that, obviously no one was there. And I found out later that it was the draft. But it was super weird that it, the draft had opened his door again and then proceeded to slam it. I just found that a bit strange. But uh, yeah, I've been, in, I've been in a similar situation. Just with, thankfully with no one inside that house, actually. Um, but very interesting thing. I'm surprised you both went with different approaches. That's pretty interesting. Um, mm-hmm. So, John, I, John, I like your approach because it's like it's kind of what most people would do. So, I'm going to give you four points for that. Noah, with the ballsy going back in the house with the person, uh, not knowing if they have a weapon or not, it's pretty ballsy. So, I'll give you, uh, I'll keep it even. I'll give you four because I, I like that one as well. All right. All right, we're going to alternate. So, uh, just similar to the Dreamer scheme. Uh, Noah, you're up. So this one's a bit longer. Your dog or cat starts staring into the darkest corner of your house. It looks like nothing is there, but your pet insists that something is there by growling at it. The lights in your house immediately turn off after this. What do you do? Oof. Well, you see, I got a fucking bottle of holy water I made at home. So I'm going to go grab that holy water. And my mom also got this thing called graveyard dirt. It's literally just dirt from a graveyard. And I'm going to throw that shit at that corner. I'm going to check that corner. If that shit is cold, I'm going to leave this house. I'm going to go downstairs, go to the nearest church chapel, get fucking priests, and exorcism the goddamn house. I ain't taking no fucking chance. Interesting, interesting. All right. John, what's your approach? All right, so I would probably get a flashlight. My phone has a flashlight, so probably just use my phone flashlight because, like, who even has a flashlight on hand? Anyway, I get the flashlight. I first would probably check the breaker to see if there's a, a, a like a breaker chip, and that's the explanation for the um, the lights going out. If it did, if it wasn't anything to do that, it was just like a normal power outage. I'd probably uh double check that there was nothing actually in my room and if there wasn't then i i would just continue about my day i, I mean i feel like that's a normal normal occurrence my cat will just be like stare off into space sometimes and i'm like what are you looking at and then they just they just stop i guess Both of you take like so. Noah's the Noah takes extreme approaches just to make sure that nothing even happens. John is more like he's cautious, but also he's like he knows that these things probably won't happen, 
And he just said that his cat does that sometimes anyway. Uh, but the way I take this situation, if they're growling, cats don't growl normally unless there's actually something there or there's actually something there. A dog can growl, I guess. They don't usually growl either. But, like, if they were just, like, looking at the corner, sure, I wouldn't think much of it. I've literally seen my cats do that all the time. But if they're growling at that corner and it's dark to the point where I can't see it, then – and especially if the lights turn off. That's the second piece is that all the lights in the house turn off. If it happened at that exact moment in time, I'm doing – I'm not going as extreme as Noah, but I'm definitely getting out of the house. And <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm – nope. If the, if the breaker the, – your lights just don't turn off, especially if I see that all the people on my street have power. Nah, I'm out. I'm out. And I'm taking my cat or dog with me. Definitely not. I'm I'm definitely not even remaining inside that house because if the if my cat's growling at a corner, the lights immediately turn off. I see that no one else on my street has uh, has no power. I'm running out of that house because that means someone deliberately cut our power off. So I'm out of there. No, nope. <laughs> I don't care if it's a ghost, demon, intruder. I don't give a crap. I'm out. Yep. But uh, very interesting approaches, uh, John. I will give you. I'll give you, I'll give you three, and now I'll give you four because I like the whole of the idea of exercising the house. I think that's pretty funny. Hey, um, if it's a ghost or a demon, it ain't gonna be there after that. Well, you never know. It could be. All yeah. right. So, John, we're back to you. Yeah. You see a spider the size of your own body crawling above your bed while you're trying to sleep. It looks down at you with all of its eyes. What do you do? All right, so now the size of your body, the size of your body, it is not, it is not the size of your hand, that your head, right. your entire body. Right. So what I would do is I would run out the room, grab a hairspray and lighter, burn the whole house down. There's no chance <laughs> that thing's gonna get out into the world. That's that is some <laughs> dangerous shit. <there. laughs> it burns the whole house down. That's hilarious. Yeah, I yeah, can I'm just see his, I can just see his parents coming home like, Joe, what the hell happened? <laughs> And he's just like, there's a spider. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Doesn't tell them that's the size of it. He just says that there's a spider. <laughs> They're just like, what the hell? Oh, uh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> All right. Uh, get rid of it. No, no. You can use the same answer. Just be cautious because I want you. To, I want you guys to answer these questions as like, what would you actually do in them? Oh, like, don't oh, tell no, me. No. Don't tell me a fictitious scenario. Like, oh, I'd grab a space rifle and shoot it. No, it doesn't exist. Oh. Oh no, I'm not doing John's approach. I have a way different fucking approach. So All mine right. is at my house, I have a few different treat tricks up my sleeve. One, I have a thing called a bed knife. Yeah, Two, bed knife. I have a thing called a old bed grenade. It's old World War II grenade. It's still uh can be armed and you to blow shit up. So in this yeah, you have scenario, a grenade under your bed. Oh yeah, it's fine. Right. Anyway, in this scenario, I'm gonna take the knife, stab it in the motherfucking gut or whatever, shove that grenade in there, pull the pin, push it, the trigger, run the hell out my room, and if it's still alive after that. I'm telling my fucking grandpa who's gonna call in a fucking A strike with well calling a fucking missile strike with an AC one thirty. That ain't gonna fucking lift. Alright. Um alright, so <laughs> so my approach to this, if it's the size of me, I'm absolutely doing what John's doing. I am burning the place down because first of all no spider should ever be that big. I'm not as scared of spiders by any means. I've actually rescued a couple spiders from my room because I don't like them. Um, but I'm not scared of them. I'll, I'll pick them up openly, especially if I know they're not venomous because where I live, there's not venomous spiders yet. Um, but I'll grab them and I'll, I, I just flick them outside because they, they can land, they can web or whatever. Um, but like if it's the size of me and if it's above my bed, I am burning the place down. <laughs> I don't care. I'm grabbing all the stuff that's important, burning it down. I don't know what I would use to burn it down. I'd probably just light something on fire. Uh, I don't know if I would need hairspray or anything. I'd probably just grab a lighter and start burning the place down. I don't, it doesn't have to be fast. It just has to be quick. Or it just I just have to get out quick. Um, so a lighter and lighter for you. Yeah, basically. Um, or I just do it. 
uh, the Last of Us style. I'll grab a like a a lamp, one of those gas lamps. I'll light it and throw it at the wall, and boom, it explodes. Yeah. Um, or don't Better. screw the wall. Throw, I'm throwing it at it, <laughs> so it explodes. Um, or call over president and say, "Hey, I need a nuke over here, please." But yeah, I don't. Uh, I, like I said, I don't watch Harry Potter or anything. But there's a spider in the Harry Potter series or whatever that I think anyone would be scared of. I don't think you need a phobia of spiders to be terrified of that thing. Um, so you know, that's what I'm doing, burning the place down. Uh, so because me and John have the same idea, uh, John, you're getting five points for that. Noah, yours is still pretty good, um, but I'll just give you three points because the nuke is a bit unrealistic. Okay, fair enough. Let's see. All right, so Noah, we're back to you. Okay. All right. Looking out of your window, you see a strange man holding something in his right hand. You can't make it out, but it looks like some sort of weapon. You look away for a moment. As you do, you hear glass shattering downstairs. What do you do? In this scenario, I'm coming out of my room, and the way my house works is it's a two-story. So with that, well, no, don't, 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 don't incorporate your house into it. You're you're using the house that's in the story. So this, so you're upstairs. So you're on the second level, oh. and you hear glass breaking on the first level. Well, in this case. I'm going to go downstairs like every window, every goddamn door, the window that was broken or whatever was broken, I am going to barricade, go grab, say in this case I have a gun, grab the gun, do security checks every hour, look out the windows until sunrise because, well, after sunrise, ain't nobody going to try to rob a house. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this. Um, all these scenarios take place at night. Um, some specify that, some do not. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, keep that. So remember that when the when you know when you're answering these questions, they all take place at night. Um, but interesting okay. approach. Uh, we'll go to John. All right. So in this scenario, it'd be a similar uh, response to the door slam event. But since I'm upstairs, I have to get downstairs, and I can't just jump out the window because I might, you know, hurt myself, and I might not get away if I break my legs jumping out the window. So I would probably grab the nearest blunt object, maybe a baseball bat, maybe uh, something that I could, something I could defend myself with, and and try to get out the house because I feel like being in the house with someone who's broken in never a good idea. Um, more most likely to more, rather be after my stuff than myself. But if they're after myself, then I don't think I would want to stay in the house to begin with. So, run out, call the cops, and um, maybe maybe hide some like like at the neighbor's house, or maybe just just run off. Who knows? John, all I'm learning from this is you are a pussy. Yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. I, I don't want to die. I mean, I'm, I'm in that I'm, scenario. Yeah, like if if someone because if you're on the second level, that's what's different about the the door slamming one because I didn't specify any sort of levels. And with this one, because it specified the level level two, for example, or it just says downstairs, meaning you could be at level twenty. Mm -hmm. You could be in a hotel or something, right? It just says, well, maybe not a hotel. If you you could be in an apartment complex, right? And you hear uh, you hear glass shattering downstairs that might be connected to your building or whatever. That's like you you're not jumping from there and, and not only living, but you're jumping from there and you have a very high chance of breaking your leg, especially because most people don't know how to do that uh, technique that kind of increases your chance of not breaking your legs. But anyway, most people don't know how to do that. And so I'm I I don't I'm not doing exactly what John's doing, but I'm definitely if I'm hearing glass shattering downstairs. I am uh, barricading my door. First of all, they're not getting in. That's the one thing I need to make sure that they're not getting in. Um, if anyone else is in the house. Let's say someone else is in the house. I'm literally screaming at the top of my lungs, hey, wake up, we got an intruder. Because at that moment, the intruder's going to be terrified. Because if I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, hey, we got an intruder, everyone is going to wake up, everyone's going to get a weapon, and it's five against one, four against one, three against one, doesn't matter. It's all of us against them. And so that's my strategy. I'm going to be screaming at the top of my lungs, wake up, we have an intruder. Because it gets everyone up, it might startle them out of the house completely. 
or if they're still brave enough to come upstairs where we are, then it's a brawl to the death. I don't care. So that's what I'm doing. Is I'm well, I guess let if, in the scenario if there's people in the house, that's what I'm doing. If it's, if there's no one else in the house, I'm barricading myself in and waiting till police arrive because I'll obviously call nine one one. Um, but yeah, if there's people in the house, I'm absolutely waking everybody up and uh, we're gonna defend the we're gonna defend ourselves. So. But very interesting things, nonetheless. Um, Noah, I will give you uh, three points for yours, and John will give you three points for yours because they're they're kind of they're different, but they're interesting. Okay. All right. So we we'll back to John, right? Or is that uh, is that my, or my and Greg? No, I think I'm back. To me. Yeah. Okay. All right, John. This one I already hate. You're in an abandoned school at night. You're walking down a long hallway when suddenly you hear someone whispering your name from an adjacent classroom. The classroom is completely dark as it has no windows in it. What do you do? Hmm. Well, you know, people who investigate in horror movies always die, so I'm I'm just getting out. You know, like I don't even know why I'm at a abandoned school at, in the middle of the night, but it's probably probably not important enough to stay in there with some creepy shit like that happening. So I just just leave at that point. All right. Uh, all right. Simplistic, but might be smart. Noah? I have always theorized about this in my head, so I'm going to tell you my plan, and it's called Make the Halls Red. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to explore that classroom where that happens. I'm assuming I'm probably in an abandoned school and I'm there to graffiti it. So, I'm taking my red spray paint. I'm going to spray that entire room the whole way around. I'm going to look at it after. And if there is a spot with no spray paint, even though I'm pretty sure I spray painted, spray painted that corner, I'm going to dip. Go to the store, get some salt. What? Wait a minute. You're going to spray, you're going to take the time to spray paint all the walls. In the, in the meantime, you're assuming if something is in there with you, that they're not going to be like, oh, well, this guy's dead. We're, uh, no, he's spray paint. I gotta leave him alone. He's, I gotta let him finish his work first. I, I'm pretty sure they, they'd more than likely be curious of, like, so it's a ghost or something. They can't do any physical harm to me unless I piss them off and off. So. I mean, they could literally lock the door behind you. It's possible. Well, so this classroom has windows in it. I'm going to eat myself out there, bitch. It, 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 the question said there's no windows in it. It's completely dark. There, I don't, oh. I, neither of you also said that you're not turning on a single flashlight. Neither of you said that. Even John, who fleed the scene, he's like, no, screw flashlights, I'm out of here. Yeah, John running around in the blind, falling over shit. <laughs> Just tips over a chair. Doesn't see a desk, yeet. But yeah, that's what. That's the question, is that it, it's, it's pitch black in there. There is no light coming in whatsoever. I'm going to spray paint the roof. <laughs> I think you're the one that's dying. I think if anything's spraying oh, the town red, they're, they're going to be spraying you red because you're going to die. Hey, um, I'll be paint the room red with spray paint and my guts, apparently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, the corner that you didn't be able to get because they were there, they're going to finish it off with you and not your spray paint. So... I don't know. I think you're. The, I think John mentioned that uh, people that go investigate the people that die. I think he was talking about you. Um, but my 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 thing is exactly what John is. Although I'm turning on a flashlight, I'm not going to investigate. But I'm turning on a flashlight so that it's not dark in the hallways anymore. And I am bolting. I don't care if I'm jumping on a window. I don't care if I'm running. I don't care. Don't care at all. I am just out of there. I'm out. I I don't even know why I would be in a school at night. But let's say, like, let's say we we were graffitiing or whatever. I'm out. I don't care. Screw that. <laughs> I really don't. I'm out. So, uh, very interesting uh, takes, though. Yeah. We're approaching a point where I'm going to stop telling you about points. So, uh, right. John, you got yeah. X amount of points. Noah, you got Z amount of points. Well, you know what's interesting, though? What? That scenario is actually something similar that happened to me not too long ago. Yeah? Yeah, like, I think Tuesday, I went to the spot where there's 
the bridge, and I'm under the bridge. There's graffiti everywhere, and it was just me doing my thing. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice whisper my name. It was like a sub voice. I heard it whisper my name. I freaked the fuck out, grabbed my shit, and fucking ran. So even your real life story, you didn't go investigate. You're just you were just out of there. So why in an abandoned school of all places would you go investigate? It's dark as fuck out there. At least that time I had light. Yeah, sure. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If <laughs> wait, hang on a minute. If you're saying in the light you won't investigate, oh, but when it's pitch black, I'm going to investigate. There, there can't be anything in there. Hey, if I got the light and someone whispered my name, I'm gonna run. All right, because that most likely means there is someone behind that fucking corner, and I gotta get the fuck out of there. I guess, but even so, I don't know why in the hell you would investigate when it's pitch black. <laughs> but all right, it's sure. Pitch black, there's no less chance of that being a person or some shit. It might just be a me. Very high chance. Homeless people very like frequent places that are like that because they don't are they're often not disturbed, and most homeless people are nice, but some aren't. They don't like you trespassing. So I'm just out. I don't care if it's a ghost or not. I played enough horror games, but uh. Fair enough. Interesting. So uh, we're going back to Noah. Uh huh. And uh, I need to find the right one here. Oh, here we go. You're working your daily night guard shift when suddenly you see a shadow move on one of your cameras. You work in a car garage. Right after that, you hear a car alarm go off in the basement of the car park. You know that it's impossible for a car to be parked down there. What do you do? Well, firstly, I'm going to watch a security footage back real quick just to make sure so I could either discern if it's a person or if it's a uh, spirit or something. If it's a person, I'm going to go investigate. Got the hell out because I'm assuming if it's security or something and this is a car shop, you most likely have a gun. Taking a flashlight with, looking around. If I find someone, well, we gonna get shot. If I don't, I'm calling cops. Okay, so you're not gonna question how there could be a car alarm in the basement when there's no cars that could be parked down there. Just means there might be someone down there. I mean, hell, you run into a car hard enough, the car alarm gonna go off. Yeah, but there's there's no cars that could be down there, so it's it's clearly not a car that's going off. It's something else. Well, fuck. I guess if I go down there, I might get run over by some kind of spirit or some shit. Yeah, it's a spirit car. All right, uh, John. All right, so this is what you got to do. You got to turn this into Five Nights at Freddy's. You lock the, the security room doors. Hopefully the doors aren't relying on the building's power like a a crazy place because I've never seen a building like that before. I lock the doors <laughs> and I just I just sit in my office and I'll keep an eye on the cameras to make sure nothing else weird happens because maybe it was just like a chick of a chick of my eyes. Maybe I'm tired. It's at night, so maybe I'm just a little tired this shift. Maybe there was some some sort of like old footage that that was there for some reason. Maybe a hacker. I don't know. But I would, I'd stick. To where I am, and if then if anything else happens, then I would probably like, call the cops or try to run away or something. Interesting. I, I like how you're turning it into FNAF. That's hilarious. Um, let's see. First of all, I wouldn't be working a night guard shift anyway because I find that terrifying already. Um, I would say if I was in the situation. I would probably do what Noah did. I would recheck the cameras to see if, like, like you both kind of did, but I would, I'm going to recheck the cameras to see if it was a trick in the mind. And if there was actually something there, then I'm doing John's idea where I'm, I'm locking myself in. I'm only here to guard the, the main floors. They didn't tell me to guard the basement. And if someone's in the basement, they can stay in the basement. I don't care. And I'm locking myself in, calling. The, uh, if I see that it was someone, I'm calling the cops because they're trespassing. Um, and then I'll unlock myself when they get there. That's my plan. So there you go. Um, right. Well, let's see points. Uh, Noah, yours was pretty ballsy again, so I'm going to give you a Y amount of points. And um, 
John, I love how the, the idea of turning into FNAF is hilarious, so I'm going to give you a uh, D amount of points. All right, nice. D, wow, that's not good, John. You love the D, though. Okay, we're not I love the D? Continue. Okay, we heard we're that. Not, Everyone we heard gonna, that. We're not going to continue this sentence. All right, moving <laughs> on. Um, so, going back to Noah. Um, let's see. All right. Oh, wait, no, that one was Noah's, right? Yes, yeah, so we're going to John. I think so. Yeah. One day you learn that if you're close enough to someone, if you're close enough to someone, you can hear their thoughts. On a dark night by a bus stop, you notice that the person standing next to you is thinking about killing you. What do you do? Um, this is a a tricky one. I would, um, probably just like walk away. If they start to follow me, then I'll I would try to lose them. I don't think waiting for the bus is a good idea. Because that just gives them more time to shank me in the chest. So I would I, I'd try to get away from this situation. Maybe go toward a more crowded place if it's in a city. Um, and, you know, hope for the best. Interesting. All right, Noah. All right, for me, whew. If I'm sitting next to someone and I learn I can hear their thoughts. And their thought is killing me. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna kill him first. I'm gonna introduce him to Texas. Oh, the shot. Well, not a shotgun, but see, if this happens, let's say it actually happens, I'm gonna be a person that uh, carries a gun, like concealed carry. So, what? I'm gonna kill him first. You go kill me, I'm gonna kill you first. This is how this is gonna work. Self defense, bitch. I don't know if self-defense will apply when you tell the no. judge that you heard their thoughts and they wanted to, wanted to kill you. Yeah, you don't have any plausible evidence that they were going to, like, kill you or anything. You only have your intuition there because only you know that you can do that. Everyone's not, no one's going to believe you. So if, they come at if me you stand in front of a judge and say, hey, I can read people's thoughts then they're going to look at you funny and be like, all right, this guy's clearly crazy. Lock him up in a mental asylum, community service for 10 years. Get him out of my sight. No, I'm <laughs> but like, like, if the person comes at me first, then I'm a pop. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, even so, you'd have, to, you'd have to, the because the, the way I w- read this question is that it's a, it, it's clearly not a bus stop in a, in a big city or anything, because that wouldn't be that scary. Cause I just literally look at something and be like, Hey, if you come over here for a sec, I just think, I think it's a bus stop that's like kind of on the outskirts of town or something. Um, and the way I perceive the situation is I'm going to straight up tell them, I don't think doing that's such a good, I don't think killing me is such a good idea because not only will that scare the shit out of them because they're, they were thinking that right. Uh, but they're also going to be like, they wouldn't know what to say. And I would say, I don't think that's a good idea. There's cameras, there's cameras here. So I would say something to like scare them. And if then they tried it, I'm out of there. Right. So I think, uh, that's the way I perceive the situation because I don't think it's supposed to be a city. I don't think it's supposed to be a city bus stop because then that's there could be people everywhere, right? So, Correct. I think it's the, I think the question is being worded in such a way that it's like it's in a outskirts of town or maybe even the country where, like, it's super it's super dark out. There might be woods nearby and like that kind of stuff. All right, um, pretty good answers. So you guys both got uh, a certain amount of points here. All right, uh, we're back to Noah. Yep. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, you're home alone at night when all of a sudden you hear your mom or dad's voice coming from a different level of the house. You know that they aren't home since they were, went out for the night and wouldn't be returning for a couple more days. The voice insists on you coming to it. What do you do? <laughs> so... If I ever have this happen, I am going to book out of that house quicker than you've ever seen. Go all the way to a hardware store, get some goddamn wire fluid or gasoline or some. I'm going to burn that house to the fucking ground. All right. I, I ain't living in this shit. <laughs> That's fair. All right, John. All right, so let's say it's late at night, right? I'll be like, man, I need some sleep. I'm starting to hear shit, and I just go to bed. And if I die, I die, because I don't I mean, 
Wait, what's a voice going to do? I don't know, because the way this question is worded for me, if it's mimicking your mom or dad's voice and you know they're not home, my first thing I'm doing is I'm texting them saying, hey, are you home yet? If they tell me no, then that, that means something is in the house. That's not a person, because a person can't mimic voices perfectly. That means something supernatural is in the house, and I'm, I don't know if I'd burn the house down, but I'm definitely getting out of there. Because yep. if someone's mimicking my mom or dad's voice, absolutely not, no chance, I'm out. I'm jumping out. That's the point where I'm jumping out of the window. I'm only on the second level, so I might break something, but it's fine. I'm out. I don't care. <laughs> There's clearly something in the house. And any time in a horror movie, you do not listen to a creepy voice telling you to follow it. Never no, once do you do that. John, so, have you ever seen a horror movie? Because you don't do that shit. No, in the horror movie, think... they, they uh, investigate, and then they die. So if you don't investigate, you don't die. Well, I don't think any of us are investigating. Like it's just that John's... Die. John's more ignoring it, which I think is a pretty interesting stance. But, you know, do do what you got to do, I guess. I mean, hell, that's uh, how you get fucking... What's it called? That's how you get fucking possessed. Yeah, it happens all the time. Okay. All right, well, you guys are getting X points for that, so... All right, uh, next one. Uh, you're driving in your car... Where... Oh, this is uh, for John, by the way. You're driving in your car when you see a girl in a white dress standing on the side of the sh- on the side of the road. You pull over and ask if she needs a ride. Without saying a word, she jumps into the car in the passenger seat. As you get down the road, you turn to look at her, only to notice that she's not there anymore. Instead, she's in the back seat. What do you do? Um. Well, I'd be like, this is some weird ass shit. I'm gonna pull over. <laughs> Uh, just leave them in the car and be like, you, you could have my car, your creepy possessing stuff, just take it. And then I would uh, probably leave the scene. Interesting. All right. Noah? I have a way different approach. I'm going to slam the car into the, 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 in the fire station, blow it up! <laughs> nope, not, not necessarily. All right. I'm going to drive that car as fast as I can. Down the fucking interstate, because I'm assuming I'm on the interstate. And you know when you find those gaps in the concrete, and there's that, like, yellow bar- barrier there? I'm going to forward into that shit. Hopefully, it yeets that bitch out. You're dead if you do that, right? You're not You're not just killing her, you're killing you. Hey, it gets me away from the creepy-ass girl. Yeah, it also okay. gets you dead, so... Well, the way that I see this question is I don't think you're on a interstate with a bunch of other cars. I think this is like classic horror movie stuff. You're on a road with no one clearly there or whatever somehow, and you're on a road and you just see her. I don't know why this person is stopping in the first place. I would not be stopping in the first place. Bye. I've gone later. I would um, either. I have to run her over. Well, let's say, <laughs> let's, say I, let's say I did do this for some reason, and she was in the back seat. I'm... You know, I've seen horror movies. If if you do what John did, you probably might die, uh, especially if you're wandering alone in the dark, especially on a road that there's no one else on. You might die, especially because you know she can teleport now. And so if she can teleport, I'm just going to be like, hey, where are you going? You know, uh, please don't say like 20 miles away. Uh, just tell me like, hey, do you want to stop here? Um, and if she gets out, she gets out. I'm going. Bye. Later. Because um, In that situation, they're already in your car, so you got to befriend them because otherwise they're going to try to kill you. Um, and at that point, the way I see it is, I'm being like, "Hey, you want where are you going? Because <laughs> I want you out of my car immediately." Um, because that's the way I see it. I don't think you're on an interstate, at least in my perception. But I, I otherwise, it's not scary. Because if you're on an interstate with a bunch of other people, um, clearly someone would see if you're getting like killed in your car. So, I had to, but I kind of wish that scenario was different. And the you don't pick them up; you get to choose. Hey, do you pick them up? Or do you just keep driving? Well, or my I didn't know because if they were, if that or was the scenario, tra- everyone in their right mind would be like, "Fuck that! I'm out of here." They would not pick her up, so they're forcing. That's what's creepy about this question is that they're forcing you to pick her up. Um, yeah. which I do appreciate. So, all right, we're gonna move a little bit quicker because we're approaching the end of the podcast, and I have a couple more. So here we go. Right. Um, this one is for Noah, I think. All right, all right. Oh, screw this one. You're wa- you're on your nightly walk when you see a guy without his head walking slowly towards you. What do you do? A guy without his head. Yep, and he's walking. Toward me. 
towards you. Yes. Slowly. Menacingly. Well, I know what I'm going to do in this scenario. I'm going to pull out my Zippo, my bottle of cologne that I have on me, or liquor. And I'm going to throw that shit over the flame and onto him and light that bitch on fire. All right. John? Um, you know, if at this point, you know, I've seen so many uh, supernatural stuff just right row. I'm going to get out of that town. That town's cursed. There's some, like, Pennywise <laughs> shit going on there. I'm just, get, I'm leaving. I'm moving to maybe the other side of the country. <laughs> just leaving. Um... Well, I think in the present. So I'm my thought is like I wouldn't even be thinking about moving it. I would be thinking about like what am I doing against this guy? Because he's walking slowly towards me. He's not just walking across the street. He's walking slowly towards me. So at this point, if he's walking slowly, because if he's coming at me, right? If he's coming at me, then I'm kicking his I'm kicking his butt to the ground and I'm booking it. Because that's what you gotta do. You gotta kick him and run. Uh, make sure he's on the ground though first. Don't just kick him in the kneecap and run. But like kick him on the floor and run. Or if he's coming from behind me. I'm going to wait till he gets close enough and I'm going to like pull a maneuver that allows me to elbow him or do something to him that will at least stun him for a bit. And then I'm actually going to turn around and book past him because that way I'm going into a place that I know because I'm going to follow the path that I went on because it's a walk, right? So I'm going to follow the path. If I run, if I run straight ahead, then at that point I might be getting into, I might get lost and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to be running back to where I came from, especially if I came from like a super bustling town or something going over there but just just get me out of that situation so yeah i'd be going a little uh, more violent with these but well i don't know if you want me to or not yeah well i just want you to tell me what you would actually do don't tell me something unrealistic but um all right so this one is for john so here we go uh you wake up in the middle of the night you get on your phone to check the time that's when you realize that a new picture has appeared on your phone it's a picture of you sleeping the photo was taken over your bed you live alone. What do you do? Um. So in this scenario, I would assume that this person who ever took this photo was still in the house, and so I would call the the cops and you know, just you know, get out of there. Maybe uh, maybe you know, like. See if who who it is. I'll text them. Who is this? Maybe they'll be like, "Oh yeah, it's just uh, your cousin Billy. Just wanted to wanted to crash for the night and uh, freak you out with this photo." <laughs> cousin Billy. Yeah. All right. Just... All right. What is it? I'm gonna go over to my stove, turn that gas, turn the gas on, not the flame, like on the burners. You all four. Light a candle, get the fuck out of there, get on a plane, and as I get on that plane, that house going to fill with gas and blow the fuck up. You like that scenario? Are you sure that's called insurance fraud? Might be. Hey, I, don't give a, I don't give a fuck. If I live alone and there's a picture on my phone of me sleeping that I did not take, I don't care if it is my cousin <laughs> Billy. You don't fucking die. So here, here's the thing though with both of your scenarios, you're not, uh, you're not, you're assuming that they're in the house, but they're not still in your room. My first assumption is that they're still in my room. They could be under the bed, they could be in the closet, they could be hiding somewhere. They could still be in my room. So my chance of escaping the room itself is already slim to none, especially if they hear me running. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a knife because I, I, I usually have either scissors or a knife next to me. I'm grabbing one of those, and then immediately I'm turning on any light source that I can. Whether it be a flashlight, if I can reach my bed, uh, my room light, which I usually can actually because it's right next to my bed. Um, I'm doing those two things, right? Flashlight and it. You know, the more light, the better. And I'm standing on my bed saying, I know you're in here. Come on out. Because I'm not moving until I see something else move. Because if I even move an inch, they could grab me from, like, if I get off my bed, for example, they can grab my feet and pull me under there and kill me. If they're in the closet, I could run past the closet. They could grab me and kill me. There's just so many terrible scenarios that, like, you can get yourself in trouble in if you even attempt to leave the room you're in. And I'm just standing on my bed, knife in hand, scissors in hand, dual wield even, saying, come on out. I know you're in here. If they don't come out, uh, then I just wait for the police to get here and they investigate. That's all that there is. So that's what I'm doing. I'm out of there. Like, I'm, I'm well, not out of there. Sorry, I keep saying that. But, like, it's just, like, I'm standing there 
defensive position and I'm just staying there. I will stay there all damn night. I don't care. I'm not moving until I see something else move because I know someone's in the house. So right. that's what I'm doing. All right. Um, this one's back to Noah. Uh, you're dreaming of a ghost tearing out your eyeballs at 3, 3 a.m. in the morning. You wake up in a cold sweat, relieved that it was just a dream. Looking at your clock, you notice it's 3.07 a.m. That's when you hear your bedroom door slowly creaking and, and, and opening. What do you do? All right. Um, in this scenario, I'm going to get up out of bed, look at the door. If it's still creaking and opening, I'm going to check the room with a flashlight on my phone and see if there's anything in there. If there's some in there, going through the damn door and leaving the damn house. If there's nothing, I'm going through the fucking window. I'm out. Nope. I'm gone. That's fair. Alright, uh, John? Yeah, um, let's see, I would probably uh, act like I didn't notice it, because if they know you know they're there, then they'll, they, they might jump out faster. So, I, I just act like I'm just going to the bathroom, and then I, uh, when, once I'm out of the room, I will. I would probably get to near the door and and wake everybody up. Be like, "There's someone in the house," and then I would, would uh, get out of there. So, how are you leaving your room without confronting it? Because there, it's your your bedroom door is opening. So you oh, have I to thought, go, it, I thought it was bedroom... a closet. No, 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 no. It's your bedroom door is slowly creaking open. Oh, well, then in that scenario. I'd grab my defensive weapon, smash it in the face, and then run out of there. All right, interesting. You're okay. All right, this one's going back to John. You're filming a video in your room when you notice a dark figure standing behind you. Looking behind you, you notice that there's nothing there. Looking back at the camera, you still see the dark figure, except now it's looking right into the camera and back at you. What do you do? Um, you know, I'm gonna go with what Noah said in that one, one, uh, I forget which one it was, but I'll, I'll go to my nearest, my nearest church, get a priest, and make him exercise the house, and, um, problem solved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Noah? Uh, for me, I'm gonna turn the camera off, restart it, if that's possible, and see if the dark figure is still there. If it's still there? I am going to go buy whatever I can to make a pipe bomb, make several different pipe bombs, put them in the house, light them all at the same time, and blow that shit the fuck up. All right, not now you're getting unrealistic. But, uh... You, you can buy the stuff to make a pipe bomb, but all right, sure. Yeah, I'm aware, arrested. but you're not, but the, you're not going to just blow up your house if you just see a dark shadow on your camera. Um... I haven't really been saying what I'm going to do for these situations because the I guess the the 3 a.m. one I'm, I kind of agree with John, so I'd probably do that. Um, the filming if I'm filming a video, I don't know why I would be doing that in the first place, but I'm, I'd be filming a video. I guess if maybe let's say if it's for YouTube and I have a cam, I have a face cam now, and I see something like behind me, I'm turning that off and I'm saying, or actually the first thing I'd say is, hey, do you guys see that as well? Is that just me? If everyone's like, yeah, we see that, I'm I'm booking it. I'm leaving the stream on, booking it. If someone if people are like, no, I don't see that at all. I'd probably be a little like, okay, I might be seeing things. Um, so it's a bit strange. I, that that would be one of those situations where I might be vulnerable because I'm, I would probably be thinking I'd be going crazy. But if everyone in my chat would be really like, yeah, I see that too, then I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. So simple as that. But uh, we're back to Noah. This one's interesting uh, and also terrifying. You wake to the sound of your newborn baby crying in the middle of the night. Soon after, you hear the sounds of your wife comforting the child. You adjust your sleeping position and realize that your wife is actually sleeping right next to you. What do you do? I am checking the baby monitor that is looking over my baby and seeing what's there or why the baby's crying. If I see nothing, I'm going to go over, comfort it myself. If I see something, I'm waking up my wife, grabbing my baby.
What you're doing, Mona? I said, I'm checking the baby monitor. I'm seeing if there's anything on the baby monitor. If there's nothing, I'm going to go and come for that baby. After the baby's back asleep, go to bed. If I look on the baby monitor and there is something, I'm waking up my wife, grabbing my baby, leaving the house, either calling the fucking church and having someone come and exercise the goddamn house. <laughs> and it appears again. Then saving the goddamn house just in case. And if Man, that. This priest is getting a lot of money out of this. Yeah. And if that's whole work, I'm gonna have someone demolish in the house. I'm good. All right, John. All right, I would probably uh, run to the baby's room and see if it was if there was anything there. If there was a person there, who, like I did recognize some stranger just like comforting my baby, I would probably yell at them that I'm calling the cops. I would, I might even like push them away from my baby, grab my baby, run out of there, and um. You know, just get out of the house because again, there's someone in the house trying to get my baby. You know, get maybe uh, wouldn't want to stay in there. So right. the way I perceive the situation is that it's you're this you hear you wake up to the sound or sorry you wake up and hear your wife's voice comforting the child, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take this into an Among Us situation. One of them is an imposter. Right, so the person, but you have to remember the person in bed with you could be the imposter. Maybe your wife actually is taking care of the child, and the person sleeping next to you is not her. Right, and so my first, my first instinct is I'm going to do exactly what noted. I'm going to check the baby monitor. If my wife is in there actually comforting the child, that's when I get out of the bed immediately and run to her. Right, I'm running to her and saying, "Hey, there was some, there's something in there. You don't want to go in there. We're out. We're take, take, get the baby. We're leaving." Um, let's say the, let's say she wasn't in there. Let's say it's John's situation. It's just a random stranger or someone I don't recognize. I'm waking my wife up and I'm going in there. Just so I know she's awake and she can defend herself if she needs to. I'm going in there with a bat or a knife or something. And I'm going to tell them, put my damn baby down or I'm going to punch you across the States. And you know, if it's a ghost, then I'm screwed. If it's not, then they're getting killed. So that's, that's just how it'd be. Um, yeah. but, uh, very, very interesting things. So I'm going to quickly scroll through these ones. Um, let's see. Uh, so, Noah, you wake up in the middle of the night to everyone in your city standing outside your house. They are all staring at you. What do you do? Uh, well, in that scenario, I'm going downstairs in the basement, locking the door to the basement, and staying down there until they fucking leave. All right. Simple enough. John? I would probably yell out the window, like, what are they doing on my property? And if they're like, we, we come to murder you, or something like that, I'd be like, well, uh, that's illegal, I'm calling the cops. And then I'd lock myself in my room, uh, maybe barricade the door, that sort of thing, while I wait for the cops to arrive. Alright, nice. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, John, you work as a plumber and you get called to a house across from your own street. The owner of the house tells you that there's a pipe there's a pipe leaking downstairs in the cellar. Hey, uh, Noah, is this you? Um, you walk down the cellar and see a guy with an unnatural smile star staring at you from the darkness. The door to the cellar closes and locks behind you. What do you do? Um, you know, I it's I bet I bet doubt there's another way out of that situation, another door is whatnot. So I would, I, I got my uh, plumber tools, right? I probably got a wrench or something, something uh, heavy and metallic that I could just smack across this, this creep's face. Um, and then maybe try to bang on the door to get the homeowner's attention, being like, there's someone down here, and they lock the door, and then hopefully they let me out. No, so I, I, I think you you understand most of it, but what you're not understanding is the door is behind you. So mm. the dude couldn't have locked it. That was some, like, the owner probably locked it. That's the way I perceive this, is that this is some sort of trap. So, but I like your, I like, I like your approach of, like, using your tools to defend against it. But, uh, no, what's your approach? Uh, I would check 
my belt for anything metallic or heavy like John. But I would also look to see if there's a window or something I can crawl out of to get out of there. So I'm not locked in. And if there is a way, I'm going to get out, get my van, and go the fuck away to a police station and tell them what happened. All right, simple enough. Um, kind of like what John said. I'm you. If it, the door is locked behind me and there's no other escape, it's a it's a it's a life or death situation. It's either me or him. And I'm grabbing every tool at my disposal. Hopefully, the sharpest ones possible. And you're dying. You're dead. I don't care. Um, especially if I notice that he has a weapon. There's just no way no. But uh, all right. So we're on to the last couple ones here. Um, so we're back to Noah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Back to Noah. Uh, you're brushing your teeth. This one's my nightmare. You're brushing your teeth in the middle of the night. When you look up in the mirror, you see your reflection smiling at you. Even though you're not smiling, what do you do? All right. Well, in this case, I don't know. This is stupid, but I'm going to look behind me. See if there's anything behind me. If there's nothing, I'm going to break the fucking window. Not the my window. window. The mirror. The mirror. I'm at the mirror. I was going to say, wait a minute. If there is something, I'm going to let it terrify the shit out of me. I think it terrifies the shit out of me. Priest, here I come. I'm standing in the church. <laughs> this priest, man, he's making riches off of this. I'll, I'll be um, safe here. Fuck that place. Yeah. Um. All right, John. Yeah, Um. I would probably be like, I, I'd probably break the mirror. You know, because there's some creepy, creepy ghost shit going on. Get out of the house. Uh, maybe even move 15 states away and never go back. Because that's, that's some like, <laughs> get out sort of stuff. Right. Yeah, so the way I perceive the situation is this is my nightmare, actually. Um, I, I, I said this in the phobia is one of the things, but I have a fear of mirrors. Not just of mirrors themselves. Like, I'm, I, I'm not ashamed of myself looking in the mirror. I don't care. My fear is that there's something that would be in the mirror looking back at me. That I don't like. Um, and uh, so my situation, I'm doing exactly what John's break are doing. I'm breaking the mirror. I don't care if about seven years of bad luck. I'm breaking it. And uh, if I get a new mirror and the same thing happens, then I'm doing what John's doing. I'm, I'm getting out of there. And I, you know what? I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll add in uh, Noah's piece as well. I'm exercising in the house. Just, just as a precaution for the new people. Um, yeah. Well, nice. Um, so Noah, you start to walk on a sidewalk on your way home. You see a tall man walking backwards towards you. You stop in your tracks and ask what he's doing. He stops as well, still looking in the same direction. He starts to run backwards towards you as fast as he possibly can. What do you do? In this scenario, when he gets close enough, I am going to stop on his foot, kick him in the balls, and hit him in the face with my elbow. When he hits the ground, I'm going to punch him a few fucking times. If that don't work, do it a few more times. And when he's out, shit, I, I'm calling the cops for robbing him and taking his shit. Oh, you're robbing him? That's your first instinct? Hey, I'm either going to take his shit and leave for the trauma, or I'm going to call the cops. All right. Well, John, what's your approach? Um, I would just turn around and sprint away, you know? I'm a decently <laughs> fast runner. I could probably can outrun someone running backwards. I uh, I just hate that image. Someone walking backwards, or someone running backwards, that's literally impossible to do. So that's terrifying. Um, but, like, yeah, my approach is just exactly what John said. I'm running. I mean, I, what I'm doing, actually, is I'll probably zigzag run, kind of like what you do for a crocodile. Because he running, if you are running backwards, you're not going to be able to really see me. So you're based off a of sound. And so if I'm zigzagging, then he's going to have a little bit of a delay. So once he hears me go to the left, he's going to turn to the left. But at that point, I'm already turning to the right. And so he's going to be real confused. And eventually I can just break his line of sight and get a break his line of sound, I guess, and just get out of there. Um, mm -hmm. Especially go running through a populated area. But uh, all right. All right, this is the last one. So this one's going to John. Uh, I know you'll be after that, obviously. Um, yeah. You buy a recorder from a highly acclaimed site like Amazon or eBay. You decide to record yourself sleeping. In the morning, you start to listen to the recording. 
Throughout the recording, you hear a voice telling you that it watches you sleep every single night, and that if you record it again, it will kill you. What do you do? Um. This one's for John. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I would probably do the. I would pay off the the priest for the millionth time. You know, <laughs> exercise the house and. Maybe, maybe you know, stop, stop recording myself. You know, maybe, maybe they have no business. They, uh, they don't want to hurt me. They just, you know, mind my own business. They just live in the same house as me. I got a ghostly roommate. A ghostly roommate. Okay. All right. No. In this scenario, I'm moving halfway across the world and never coming from fucking back because, <laughs> um, ain't no priest gonna help that shit. I'm moving them to the Vatican <laughs> City. I'll be fine there. Yeah. That's my favorite no line of the day. Ain't hey, no priest gonna fix that shit. That's gonna be a hey, lot. No. Alright, uh, so that because I was the last one to say my piece on that one. Um, essentially, the way I perceive the situation is you don't know if this is a ghost or not. This could be a literal... It just says a voice. So this could be an actual person that's like watching you sleep every night. And I would probably move. I would probably immediately move. That's my first instinct. I I just get out of there. Um, like same day. I'm not waiting another night to have that happen again. So I'm out. And then uh, I would take in my new house. I'll take extra precaution to make sure that no one can be watching me. Um, but anyway, so that is all I got. I had a little bit more than I uh, needed to, I guess. But that's fine. Uh, you guys got a lot of points today, so that's pretty good. Um. So let me finish with the totals from the last question, and uh, we'll be good to go. Um, right. Very interesting responses. Like I said, you both differed quite uh, well, besides from the priest. You both agreed on the priest several times. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, interesting. All right. So. Uh, all right, here we go. So I'll start with, I'll start with Noah. So Noah. Sure. You got a whopping 49 points. You got you did really good. You didn't lose a single point because you were actually decent today. And uh, you got 49 points. So good job. Okay. John, on a little small losing trick here, bud. Um, you, did, you did pretty good as well. I like some, I especially liked your FNAF one. That was pretty funny. Um, and it's honestly, so, a lot, you said a lot of things that a lot of people would honestly do. Um, whereas Noah's were more wacky tacky, you were kind of more in the realm of like, this is what like a normal person would do. And I find that interesting. Um, so John, you got a whopping 52 points. So you won just by a little bit, but it was enough to get you ahead. Noah, you're actually last one. You were down to like 41, but that last one that I liked a lot, uh, gave, gave you enough, gave you a boost, but it wasn't a big enough boost. But so John, you're the winner of today's episode. Do you got a winner's speech for us? Um, this is a momentous occasion. I won a podcast episode. Uh, I want to thank my grandma and my <laughs> priest. My priest helped so much in this episode. Yes. I think uh, your grandma was fucking dead. I have more than one grandma, you know. Yeah. Oh. Parents on both sides, anyway. Um, I don't want to thank Noah because uh, uh, he doesn't deserve uh, uh, it. Uh, like you. And <laughs> yeah, no, that's about it. All right, now you got a loser speech. Uh, John, I just want to say fuck you for using the priest. That was my go-to bitch. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think the true winner of today's episode is that priest because he's gonna be running. He's gonna be laughing his way to the bank. Um. Mm. So, you know, you're welcome, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome in advance. So, with that being said, that's going to be the end of today's podcast episode. So, thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you provoked a conversation and made you laugh along the way because that's what all this was about. Although, this one is a bit more spooky. So, hopefully, you listened to this tonight and made sure you looked behind you at the thing that was staring at you the entire time. You just looked behind you, didn't you? You didn't see it, but it was there. You looked behind you again. Still not seeing it. You have to look a little bit more to the right because we all see it right now. Yeah, it's right behind it's gonna you. Be, it's going to if you. It's going to be too late if you don't look again. But with that being said, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. You can catch me on Flabs Sexy Gaming on uh, YouTube. Uh, that's all I'm, I'm on right now. Uh, we also have a Patreon. I keep forgetting to mention that, but we have a Patreon for this specific podcast. If you want to get exclusive content for the podcast, 
then go over to our Patreon site. Um, just go on Patreon. You can type in the provokers, or there will be there should be a link, uh, especially on my YouTube channel. There's a, there's a link on there that will take you to it. Um, so go check it out. There's different tiers. So if you don't want to spend too much, don't worry. There we have lower tiers for you. Um, but go check it out over there. Um, if you don't want to worry, check out John, he's on Twitch. He's on Twitch at, at Jeevan's Feebins, uh, but he's also on YouTube. He does he uploads like snippets from his uh, streams on YouTube. So go check him out over there. And uh, Noah's not on anything right now except for Xbox. So he's on Noah Dog Fifty Four. Um, so check him out over there, I guess. And yeah. uh, Noah, you're gonna tr- you're gonna you're trying to say something. I was gonna say, hey, if you go for the Patreon, I'm the cheapest fucking tier, all right? No, you're not. The cheapest tier is just like thing. I I think it's just called provoked or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, go check that out and uh, thank us so much for listening, and we will see you guys in the next episode. And some of that shit was scary. <laughs>